Hello guys, welcome back to C1 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily C1 Engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the important topic which is known as the effective depth. The effective depth for the beam section or for the slip section or any flexor section. That what is effective depth and how we can find the effective depth and it is a very important term in the design of any flexor section. So, first of all, to define the Effective depth, and then I will explain will explain to how to find the effective depth with an example. So, effective depth can be defined as that it is the distance from the extreme fiber of compression zone to the centroid of the tension steel. So, how to explain this on the figure? If I look to this figure of the beam section of width B, this is in a beam section of width B. And let's suppose this is any height of this beam section, which is H here. And these are the reinforcement provided in the beam section in order to resist the tensile stresses or the bending moment. So what will be the effective depth for this beam section? So if we see here, it is the distance from the extreme fiber of the compression zone. So this distance is taken from this extreme fiber as this is as this is the neutral axis of the beam section. So this will be the extreme compression zone of the section. So it is the distance from the extreme fiber of compression zone from here up to to the centroid of this tension steel. So up to the distance where there is a centroid of the steel bar. So here is the centroid of the steel bar. So this distance will be known as the effective depth represented by small d. So it is effective depth. Now how to find this effective depth? Uh, we mostly use a simple formula to find the effective depth that we will show here now. Let's suppose this is a beam with a height or the total depth of 300 millimeter. This is just an example. So height of the beam section is 300 millimeter. And let's suppose also that there is a concrete cover. Concrete cover here we provide for this beam section CC. Concrete cover let's suppose is 20 millimeter according to the standards. It's just an example here. So concrete cover is 20 millimeter here. And let's suppose this is a bar diameter of 16 mm. 16 mm is used as a main reinforcement in this beam section. So after knowing, so here is the phi is 16 mm bar. So after knowing these three terms, we can easily find out our effective depth which is D. So now to find the effective depth, so effective depth will be equal to the height of the beam section minus concrete cover minus the diameter of the bar divided by 2. So D is effective depth here. So it will be equal to the total height minus concrete cover. Subtract this is the total height. Subtracting this concrete cover and also subtracting the half of the diameter. Subtracting this concrete cover and subtracting the half of the diameter because it is up to the half of the diameter. That's why we subtract the half of the diameter. So now subtracting the half of the diameter, so we will get the effective depth D. So D will be equal to the height is 300 mm minus CC is 20 mm minus diameter of the bar is 16 mm diameter divided by 2. So here we get 272 millimeter. So effective depth for this beam comes out to be 272 millimeter for this case. So this is the way how to find out the effective depth. And this effective depth later used in the design of the reinforcement. For example, if we use the reinforcement design equation which is a is, is equal to the mu divided by phi if u into d minus a by 2. So in this equation we clearly see here 
that here we use this d effect to depth so it's a very important parameter so that's why we should know that what it is and how we can find this parameter hope you guys understand how to find the effective depth and what is effective depth and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos thank you for watching our video